I want to welcome you to the first in three series of guitar builds that I'm going to feature here on YouTube. So the first is going to be geared toward somebody building their very first guitar. We're going to look at a slab guitar. So for this one, we're going to look at this Telecaster and we're going to start there, start very simple and build our way through this Telecaster. We're gonna build two of them at the same time. So we're gonna build one that replicates very much what you would see out of the Fender factory. It's gonna have a simple body, a maple neck. We're gonna do a maple fretboard on it. We're gonna use fairly stock pickups in this. This is gonna be a broadcaster set from Seymour Duncan. It's gonna be pretty sweet. Uh, through this build, we're gonna be using the templates that I make. This is our, our simple kind of stock Telecaster that we're gonna build. Then over here, we're gonna do a little bit more of a custom Telecaster build. So this one's gonna have a Bigsby B5 in it. It's gonna have a little different set of pickups. These are humbucking pickups that are stacked, noiseless, pretty, pretty sweet sounding, again from Seymour Duncan. Ash body on both guitars. Then this one's gonna have a Zebra Wood or Zebrano cap on it and an ebony fretboard. We're also gonna do some cream binding on this guitar just to kind of set it off. Not going to have a pick guard over here. We are going to have a pick guard over here. So the idea is that I can show you how to do several different things in these builds, kind of paralleling them. And you'll be able to make the decision on your guitar how you want to proceed with that build. Let's take a quick look at the template set for the Telecaster. And this is a fairly standard way to set up templates. I like the clear acrylic because you can put your center line through there and you can always find it. Uh, you can also use it to line up the grain because you can see through it. So this one has some options for different uh, electronics routes. This is pretty standard, standard holes for the bridge and electronics cavity. Then uh, there's, you'll notice this is, this is the back side of the body, no neck pocket route in here. This template lines up uh, using two of the bridge holes then you use this piece to route the neck pocket and then there's some alternate pickups so if you want to do a humbucking pickup either in the bridge or in the neck position you can use these routes so this is an exposed uh, humbucker so no no pick guard this is a humbucker under the pick guard you can see that fender this is a mexican made telecaster it's two pieces of wood guys it's a, a body like this, a solid body, one piece. This one out of the factory, they route them for the humbuckers now. A single piece neck, we're gonna do a, a two piece neck because doing the skunk stripe requires some pretty intricate jigging to get the angles and all of those things right. The neck templates, there's three pieces to it. So the first piece is the full neck. So this is the big outline. There's holes in these templates for all of the tuning pegs, all of the fret markers, uh, and then holes to hang them, which is kind of cool. Um, then we have the back of the headstock. So this is the piece where uh, you can transfer the lines for how does the profile carve meet the back of the neck. And then lastly uh, is the heel template. Again, it's just to outline the lines where it transitions between the neck profile and the heel. And then in this template, uh, we've got a 12th fret uh, profile, so you can line that up, and then we've got a first fret profile as well that you can line up so that you get your neck profiles put together for this. I'm gonna be using, to do the fret slotting, this template here, and essentially you can use a razor blade and just go through these and mark all of your frets. It's a very inexpensive method for doing fret layout uh, versus some of the nicer templates that are metal that require a pin and a table saw and some other things. Uh, these are very simple and straightforward and you just use them with a hand saw. So that's what we're gonna do for these builds just to keep it simple. I wanna take a quick 15 second time out here and let you know if you want any of the templates or any of the guitar tools that you see me using during these videos, you can check us out at skyscraperguitars.com. You can even get a t-shirt like this if you want to. Um, all of our stuff is made here in the United States of America by some very talented craftspeople, and I would put our quality up against anyone else any day of the week. I think we offer a little bit better price point. My 15 seconds are up. Back to the guitar build. So day one, we're gonna wind up 
working with three different pieces of wood on our factory build and we're going to have four pieces of wood on our custom build so let's get going on the two neck blanks that's where we want to start and then from there we'll do our fretboards and then the last thing that we do which is usually the first thing people want to do is our body blanks and getting them ready uh, the bodies are the easiest thing to do the necks are the hardest start with the hardest first and work your way in and that's going to be that's my favorite method to work on guitars. I'm hoping you guys can see that in the camera, but we're at uh, point seven six five so I need to take five thousandths more off actually it might be four thousandths more off there we are I hope you can see that point seven six zero maybe seven five nine thousandths is okay <laughs> we're oversized a little bit uh, at that thickness so we should be good to go and we got nice mating surfaces here for the fretboard and the neck to come together as well this is just your standard uh, 12 inch with a 6 inch clearance bandsaw 100 bucks at most garage sales uh, with a quarter inch blade in it uh, and then I use a pretty wide uh, tooth per inch on it I can't remember what this particular blade is it's probably four or five teeth per inch. After a few rounds of planing, we're down to 0.26, which is where I wanted to be, slightly oversized. And you can see I was running some ebony through there at the same time as the maple. Um, but I think we're in really good shape on this piece. Just got to cut it to size here and then my ebony piece I got to run through one more time to get it the same size. I've got a router bit set up in my router here, um, some blue tape down on my table saw. Ordinarily um, I like to cut the truss rod uh, routes in while the blank is square and I square the center line up to the edge and then I can run it through a router table but I know not everybody has that at their disposal so I just wanted to work a little bit with how most people might have a setup so this is just a table saw very flat surface uh, I've got a fence here that I jointed this edge and I have a known distance from the center line of my tool to uh, the work here so I just need to move this fence so that it matches that center line Let's see what this one's doing double check it's good there it's good there yep perfect not moving let's double check that the router is in the center just visual that looks good that looks good you just you know you don't want to mess this up you got one shot at it now we'll adjust for a little bit deeper just a fraction lower and then we need to carve out this end for this contraption here I have my blank here for my neck and it's actually big enough for two necks side by side so I'm gonna make this tele neck out of the figured side I don't know if you guys can see the figure in that but this side's pretty well figured this side has a little figure uh, but I'm going to use it in a future build for a strat neck 
And the first thing I need to do is joint the two edges and they don't need to be parallel. They just need to be flat and true. And I already jointed this edge and I'm checking with my straight edge and it is very, very straight. So that's good. Um, I'm gonna joint this edge now on camera. This is my Stanley number eight joiner. This is my pride and joy. Uh, I bought this on eBay. It was a mess and uh, I restored it several years ago and it's just been a wonderful plane for me. And I just got done sharpening the blade or the plane iron. So it's cutting well. This is figured wood. I need to probably take it out just a little bit. Yeah. We just want to nip it, you know? Probably go just a little bit more than that. Let's try that. Ah, uh, we're rubbing the cat the wrong way. Let's try it this way. With figured wood, sometimes it's hyper important which direction you're planing. Yeah, that's going to be much better. We'll wind it out just a little bit. You can hear the difference. Let's get rid of all those. One more. Nope. Yep, super happy with that. Got two jointed edges now. So that should go through our router. Now we need to lay out our marks for the center line of these two necks. And we wanna keep that center line parallel to that edge and that'll let us use the router table to do the work. I've got two templates laid out on here. This is my Telecaster template. This is my Stratocaster template. And both of them fit quite well. And I've gone ahead and made a mark through uh, one of the holes here and one of the holes here where I think I would like the center line to sit. We're gonna just go ahead and put the edge of the straight edge right on the edge of this piece of wood and then draw our center line here. And you'll notice a technique <laughs> as I'm doing lines, I always twist my pencil as I go. So I put a little angle on it and twist. And when I used to do architectural illustration, that's where I learned that, to keep a very sharp line, if you twist as you draw, it sharpens your pencil as you go. And uh, one of my mentors showed me that because he was incredibly picky about lines being perfectly straight and rightfully so, very technical type of an art. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect that center line through there. We'll put our template back up and just make sure that it's all the way, uh, what I would call like through and through, right? So it's through on that end, it's through on this end. So that's where our neck will reside. I'm gonna get this lined up here. Sorry if I'm, if my lights get into the picture, but I have a couple really nice old Luxo drafting lamps that I use. Uh, if you can't see that, it's off camera. This one is a magnifier so I can look through the lens. It usually gets pretty, uh, pretty dusty in here, but I can clean off the lens and I can look through and just make sure that I'm perfectly lined up at all times and this looks really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace it. Again, twisting that pencil as I go. And I, I keep an electric pencil sharpener in my shop here and I usually keep three or four pencils sharpened up how I like them. And that way, as one gets dull, you can just swap out and grab another. I know those are like silly things to share, but those are the things that to me make a huge difference in accuracy 
and uh, just your ability to make things happen. So there's our Telecaster neck. I'm going to do the exact same thing for this Stratocaster neck and I'll cut them both at the same time and just have this one sitting around for the next project. I forgot to mention that we do want to mark the nut location. We're going to be putting that truss rod right at that line for the nut. At the other end of the truss rod, I'm going to draw a little line there and that will be where we stop our route. I need to take that line around the end here. So we did the same thing for the line for the nut and we're going to bring that down and around there on the edge so that again as we drag this through the router we can see where that line is. Now we just need to go to the bandsaw and cut these out. It's going to be just a little bit hairy through that corner there, <laughs> but we're going to, we're going to do it. We have, we have the technology to make that happen. table to route your truss rod pocket is you use a square and you line up the leading edge of the bit and then the trailing edge of the bit there we go and we can always stop a little bit short finish up with a chisel essentially we will come past the bit, set this down, pull it back to the line, pull it back to this leading edge line, right? And then we'll push it through and come to this trailing line, pull it up, adjust the height, and then move on. This is a really nice router lift from Woodpeckers, and it allows you to really adjust in thousandths of an inch. So very accurate way to do it versus the hand router that I showed earlier. I transferred all the marks to the top of both necks so I can line it up either here or I can line it up on the side over there. It's whichever I have the best view of and sometimes that changes so it's nice to have multiple marks to go off of. see we've got where the round bit was in the square end of the truss rod so we're just going to come in here with a small chisel this is a quarter inch and this slot is a quarter inch so it works out that's looking a heck of a lot better now we need to clean up the other end and we can see that we need to clear out a little material on both sides here. Okay, we've got the outline correct for this. 
Now we just need to give it a little bit more depth. But when you get these things this close, one way to tell if they're under or over is to put a little straight rule on them. And if it rocks, it means it's too high. And down here, we can see it doesn't rock, so it's good, it's good, it's good. So really, we're just up in, in this area up top here, and it's not much. Again, just kind of cleaning out the bottom of this groove, um, using my chisel, a little bit like a scraper. Just need to get a few thousandths more out of here. Very slowly worked our way down to where we're solid all the way down the neck. This truss rod fits very well. Here are the two body blanks, and I wanted to explain a little bit in regard to the grain. Um, you can sort of twist these around and put them in different order and that sort of thing, but what I'm looking at is, does it almost look like it could be one piece of wood when you put it together and you can see this grain runs out right into the other grain, and this was the best orientation for these two pieces. So I cut four pieces out of the same board uh, and I just mixed and matched them till I found something that I thought would work. This is the second set, similar thing. It's just got this really narrow band through here that I thought matched up fairly well. And then the cathedrals on these two are gonna be pointing in the same direction. So we'll have two different looks for these two different guitars, but it should be kind of cool. We're gonna run these through the planer and these are fairly flat. What I always like to do is put them on a surface like a table saw and just see if there's any movement, any rocking at all. And this way there's no rocking. So we're gonna put it through the planer and just make sure it's gonna make a nice flat surface. We have plenty uh, of material here. I think this is like 1.9 and we need it down to 175. So we've got enough material to clean these things up. So that's our next step. We've got our four blanks, or our four sides anyway, right at one, well, we're just below 1750. There we go, 1745, which means inch and three quarters minus five thousandths, about a little bit thicker than a piece of paper. Uh, the finish will definitely take up some of that. The sanding will bring it down a little bit more, but uh, we're gonna put aside our standard Telecaster pieces. Our T1 pieces here, we're gonna thickness down another quarter of an inch. These are at inch and a half plus five thousandths, which I think will be just fine. That leaves us a little room for sanding and error. The next thing we have to do, now we have two parallel sides, is we have to come in and joint the edge, the glue edge, that's gonna go between these two body blank halves. I've got my joiner set up here to just take a nice thin cut. That's how I like to do it on the joiner. And I've got my pairs back together now, so I've got arrows on the ends that need to be jointed. So here's these two boards. I hope it comes through on the camera, but this is what we want. We want to put these two pieces together and that glue joint just is going to disappear. That's just with me holding it with my hands. When we get clamps on it and glue, it's going to look really sweet. I think that grain matches up nicely. There's a little funky right here, but maybe as we put the template on, and when I say funky, the grain just doesn't match up. You know, it starts running. Uh, a little bit different on this side. It, it comes back this way. But I think when we put the template on it, we'll be able to make sure that that maybe hits under the bridge or under the pickup, pick guard, something. But I think it'll look pretty sweet. Here's that second set. So this is gonna be the set with a cap on it. I'm just taking a look at that glue joint. And this is with no clamps, just sitting here on the table saw. And when you clamp it, it's gonna get just a little tighter than it is, it looks pretty sweet. That grain really lines up nicely. But I think when we put our template down, this is just kind of a rough idea where that might go. Uh, that check stops about right there. So it'll be hidden when we cut this thing out. 
a little bit later. You definitely wouldn't be able to see it from the top, but I don't think it'll even translate from the back there. The last event in the <laughs> Body Blank Olympics is gluing the two halves together. And I always think of this sort of like surgery because it is a timed event. Um, I try and get all my clamps ready, get them positioned so they're you know pretty close to where they need to be. And I don't have blocks of wood for the end of this. Normally I would put a block of wood here so I don't mar it, but I know I'm gonna cut off uh, the ends of both of these boards. I am using Tight Bond 2. That's what I like. There are people with all different kinds of likenesses for glues. We're gonna put it on nice and even. And then there's much debate about how to clean up glue joints, especially if you're going to have exposed uh, wood grain. You don't wanna get the glue um, to, you don't want the glue to stain the piece that you're working on, especially if it's gonna have a clear finish. I like to start by just kind of give it a light squeeze on all clamps. Just make sure that our clamps are in the right spots. Make sure our pieces are in the right spot. Now, I'm gonna put a clamp on the back here because I want this flush more than anything. That looks really good. We'll do the same up here. Nice even clamping pressure here. We should start to see a little bit of glue squeeze out everywhere. That's looking good. We're looking good kind of all the way around. Tip this up. We can see a nice even bead on the back side. Go ahead and give that the beans. Oh yeah, that's good. Second verse, same as the first. These are kind of the standard ones, so they're a little bit thicker. And we're gonna put down just a little bit more glue because of that. Perfect. A little spread action here. We have our zebra wood here, and I'm looking at the faces, and I think I'm gonna cut this face against the fence, I've jointed the bottom here uh, so that it would run nice and true. I've got the fence squared up. So I should be able to take two pieces out of this and book match them. This thing is, is really well tuned up. This is a three quarter inch blade. I have bigger blades. Uh, this one seems to be pretty good for this type of wood. This isn't a super hard wood. And that's just gonna be beautiful. That's gonna be wonderful as a top. So uh, this side's a little bit thicker. I'm not gonna run that through the bandsaw. I'm just gonna run it through uh, the drum sander until they're both the same thickness. And uh, we'll probably have a second top in here for another guitar at another time. So yeah, that's gonna be sweet. Thanks for joining me for the first episode in the first series of Guitar Builds. It's been a heck of a weekend. I'm trying to break these down so that it's doable for somebody on a Saturday and Sunday. Obviously, I'm building two guitars at the same time and I'm filming, so that's kind of my gauge. If I'm able to do that, I think just about anybody can do a single guitar without filming. But we got both body blanks glued up and, and thicknessed. We got a drop top for one of the bodies um, cut and edged, ready to book match and thickness next time. And we got three necks roughed out and truss rod slots cut. And then we have the fretboards thicknessed and kind of rough shaped, but they're gonna be ready for doing the fret slots next time. We'll glue those onto the necks. We'll get the necks and the bodies routed with our template to shape, and then we'll get the drop top glued on. I think we're gonna be able to do these two guitars in four episodes, including the finishing and the setup. We'll see how it works. I appreciate everybody tuning in and following along. Hopefully you're doing your own build at home and having just as much fun as I am here. Until next time, take it easy guys. If you would like more guitar related content, click that subscribe button. If you want to follow the rest of this build, click the playlist to the right. And as always, visit skyscraperguitars.com for guitar tools and accessories.